Chris Nixon is a beef and dairy farmer near Orbost in East Gippsland, Victoria, and recently he has moved away from chemical reliance in his farming practices to regenerative principles, and he's seeing massive gains. It's been over a five year period. Let's find out more. <laughs> Chris, how are you, mate? Good, Tim, yourself? Not too bad. Now, you don't have a small operation here. Tell us what you're running. Uh, we run. 550 dairy cows and we run about a thousand beef cows around Orbost and and a few more in other parts of the countryside. A few more being about another 600. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So you noticed some problems with your dairy operation? What yeah. Were they? So we were heavy uh, heavy nitrogen users, mm -hmm. um, like using latest practices that you know spread 50 kilos when the cows come out of the paddock and you'll grow yep. mountains of grass. And when we started, we we did grow mountains of grass. It was wonderful. So you got early gains. Got early gains, wonderful gains. But what we noticed over a long period of time was that the clover content of our pastures disappeared mm -hmm. and then the amount of grass we started to grow slowly got weaker and weaker and weaker to the point where I complained to my sales rep that he wasn't putting the, the juice in the fertiliser anymore because I'm not getting a bang for dollars. So. so your rates had to get up and start going up in order to get the same return. Now, at the same time, you had some problems with cell counts and some health issues with the dairy Well, cows. in our dairy, we had a lot of lameness. We had a high um, high incidence of mastitis. You know, we, we, we were struggling to stay under 250,000, which is the, the quality band. Mm -hmm. And our chemical use to keep those things under control was quite high. Now, it got to the point also where you started to run a second herd for mastitis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Uh, employing staff like I do, you know, sometimes hygiene practices aren't great and the combination of issues, you know, we, we ran a second herd in our dairy operation for best part of half a year. So time consuming, depressing, makes milking not enjoyable. So yeah, it was, yeah, gee, can I keep doing this? It's getting harder and harder on me, so. Charlie Massey once told me that, you know, before people take on new practices or try something new, they've really got to hit a wall. You hit a bit of a wall with your cell counts and your herd health, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, yeah, it was just challenging because it was, you know, no one likes spending half an hour, an hour in the dairy just treating animals for various health issues that, um, that seem to have right, arisen from what we were doing and um and uh i know charlie he lives just up north from me and yes. um he, he's a great advocate of this and you listen to him and you listen to a few other people in the journey and you start to think well maybe there is another way so talk me through what your traditional routine was what were you spreading on the paddocks before you changed um we were putting on 400 to 400 to 500 kilos of urea um, per annum and and we'd this is per hectare. Per hectare, and we're probably putting on 200, 250 kilos of single super and uh, well, single and potash. And you were drenching a lot and doing all of the other. Well, we issues. still got, we, you know, we still have to, um, because of our high stocking rates, we still have worm and liver fluke issues that we have to keep them on top of. Unfortunately, that hasn't solved all our all yep. our uh, animal health issues, but yeah. It's certainly a lot easier today than what it was five years ago. So talk us through what you're spreading on the paddocks now. You're not spreading super anymore, you're not spreading urea anymore. No, not, not spreading super, not spreading urea. Um, I used to call it the, the, the voodoo guru juice. Yep. You know, um, so my, my chemical rep, uh, my fertiliser rep, sorry, introduced me to a fellow called Peter Norwood from Full Circle Nutrition. Mm -hmm. He came, you know, and he said, well, if he's just going to come here and sell me stuff, like all salesmen do, this will make you grow more grass. Don't yep. bother unless you can explain to me how it, how this works and why I should go down this path. So him, Peter came up and brought out his trusty computer and uh, and went through all these chemical formulas of uh, you put this on, this on, this on, and you'll see this happen and these are the changes you'll expect to see in the first couple of years. And so on the, on the strength of his presentation to me, I said, right, I'll give you two years on the dairy. If I see an improvement, we'll keep going. If I don't see an improvement, prevent it'll be ta -da, said the fox. Now you like to measure things. We were just in the yards today working with your cattle and you're very astute with your measurements. You also measure your paddocks. Now you do a soil test once a year and yes. you spend a lot of money on that soil test. Tell me a little bit about it. Uh, well it's the, based on the Albrechtson test um, and they get done in America so they are expensive and but you know we have learned that on our river flats we have five and a half tons of phosphorus that have been locked up in the soils. On as our hill, unavailable. As unavailable. On our hill country where we're standing here today um, we have about three and a half tons of phosphorus locked up that's unavailable to the plants in the, in, 
to grow with. So we've been putting on a lot of fertiliser over the journey and because of the high aluminium and iron in our soils, it's just getting locked up all the time. So, so we were locking it all up, we weren't making it available to the plants. So what are you, what are you actually putting on the paddocks now? This is not a cheap option. There's a, there's a lot of stuff to get to get it right, but once you have it right, it's just about fiddling with the edges. So the dairy now, we've got it pretty right. So now it's just about fine tuning the operation. Um, we've put a lot of lime on. Um, our soil test traditionally in the traditional test was around 5.2. Um, now we're up around 6.2. And that's your target, isn't it? 6.2? 6.2, 6.3 is our target. Um, so Peter, with his experience, learnt that once you get over 6.3, there's a reason why they use lime in road base. Yes. Your soils get harder again. Yes. So you can go too far. That's why it's important to do a soil test every year to see where you go. So you're fine-tuning your operation, not not killing it. We've put, a, uh, we've put on a fair bit of gypsum. Mm -hmm. um, we've put on a fair bit of silica max, which is sand for another, <laughs> burnt sand for one, another sand. word. Yeah. Um, that's actually been one of the, the great ways of freeing up the, the potash and the, and the phosphorus in our soils. Um, and of course, we're, we're spraying our, our paddocks twice a year with the biology of fish, kelp, molasses to feed the fish and kelp and the, and the, and the bugs, the, the probiotics of the, of, of the soil. So you're feeding the biota that's already in the soil, that's native to the soil. Yes. And you're also putting on some poultry manure as well? Uh, yeah, we're, uh, we've already done the dairy. We're in the process of collecting 1,600 cubic metres to do the rest of the beef country. Um, again, that, that brings in a sort of source of potash and phosphorus, a natural source of potash and phosphorus, but that's a secondary consideration as what's in the chook manure is the bugs that the chooks have that helps uh, get things, G things up. Now, what's been the change to your pasture after you've reactivated your soils and you're keeping your bugs healthy? and you're not killing them off with your rear application. So the paddock we're standing in is the this is this is a paddock where we're two years in. Um, you can see if I've been down here the, the plants are a lot more upright and erect. The leaves are a lovely big size and it's actually white clover. We can always grow uh, sub clover on, on the paddocks but now the paddocks are converting over to white clover which we haven't seen on hill country since yeah, since I was a kid, basically. So, yeah, well, so we've always planted it, but yes, it ne never, never came up. It never succeeded in being sustainable in the paddock. And here we are now. If you just have a look around, you know, it, it's growing in mass. It's it's fantastic. So we know with white clover, we're going to store between four and five hundred kilos of natural natural nitrogen in the soil. So so if it can do it on its own without me spending a cent. Yeah, it's well worth That's it. That's not bad, is it? Because nitrogen's getting expensive after all, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. So so the system, where I'm five years in, the system's coming down off, a, off its peak cost because we did mm -hmm. put a lot of this and that and all sorts of weird and wonderful stuff in, as the as the brew says. And, and, it, and it will continue to go on because we're now looking into the micronutrients of some of the things that we're sort of low on. But, you know, you get uh, surprising results. Like um, we freed up a heap of boron in our soil. So our boron was low, now it's adequate. We haven't put any boron on, it's there in the soil, it's been locked up. And so we're freeing, you know, that's just one example of some of the micronutrients that, that have been released by this program. Now I hear stories from people that change over to natural programs from chemical based programs and they say there's always a collapse before you start to regenerate the soil and get good growth. You haven't experienced that so much but that's because you've been onto it and you've been changing your regime every year according to your soil tests? Yeah, there is a, yes, there is a changeover um, and I think I've been lucky because of the way the seasons fell that, you know, we, we've been, you know, last year was a very tough, dry year for us and, and so, yeah, we did struggle last year. This year is looking a lot healthier for, you know, this early part of spring. So, um, yes, yeah, there is, yeah, you sort of go down and dip and up. <laughs> What's been the health results with, say, your dairy herd? What, what, what sort of incidence of mastitis do you have now? What's your average cell count now? Do you have any foot problems? Uh, we don't have well, very little foot problems, um, even though I got horribly wet through winter. Um, our cell count is, we sit around between 60 and 80,000, mostly around 70,000. Whereas in the past you were having trouble staying under 250. Yeah, so I'm actually in the top 5% 
in the country for uh, bog cell count. So, so I'm not saying it's totally just this program, but I think it's got a fair chunk to do with it. You can't rely on one thing ever. No, no. But this is telling a good story, isn't it? You've yeah. got white clover coming back for the first time in 50 or 60 years. Yeah. You've got healthier animals than ever before and your cell count's down, meaning that you make more money off your milk check. Well, we're not, yeah, and we're not spending an hour after milking treating cows for various health issues. So, so you know, everyone, everyone likes milking because you come in, milk the cows, and they go, you know, and it, everything flows smoothly. When everything goes well, everyone's usually pretty happy. So, even the guys doing the cups on every day. So, so we've noticed a big health. Yeah, that's been a really big bonus for us in that regard. So if someone was considering swapping from a chemical based program over to a biological program, what are your top three learnings that you would pass on? Um, soil tests. Yep, soil regular. Tests. Regular soil and tests. often. <laughs> Got it. Because um, you can't manage what you can't measure, can you? No, no. What's the point? You know, like I said, plenty of people will come in through your farm gate and say, you want to put this on because you'll grow more grass. or you, But if they can't explain it to you how it grows more grass, then how do you know? And so if you're not get the right it, advice, Yeah. measure it. Measure it, get your right advice, measure it, and keep your mind open. You know, to, like I said, I thought, you know, I'll put this voodoo juice on and we'll see if it actually works. And, you know, now I'm a convert and we're turning our, our whole beef farm over to it as well. So, yeah, I think it's... Uh, it's an interesting learning curve and it'll be interesting to see where we go. I, I know of some some people who have been able to lift stocking rates quite dramatically uh, once they've got the system settled. Five or six years in. Five or six years in. Nothing's in the in in the in the cattle livestock game, nothing's quick and easy. So uh, so you have to prepare that the, you will take a bit of a knock. Um, seasons being what they are, but uh, don't help because that's just another moving part in our operations. But uh, I think if we can get if we can get our basics right and keep keep our costs low, you know, going forward over the long term, you know, we, we've got a good chance of surviving in the long term. Chris, good on you, mate. Thank you very much for sharing the advice with us. And if you want to keep your mind open and get the best advice, hit that subscribe button. Don't miss out. We've got something new every week. Chris, hopefully we can come back in a couple of years' time and see how this amazing recovery is going for you. <laughs> no worries. Too easy, Tim. So here we are in another part of the farm where I was very successful at growing bent grass. Um, and if you look carefully, just got flat weed and a bit of bent grass coming through there, a little bit of oversown annual rye grass. And if you just lift the camera up and have a look around, you can see again there's a, a mat of white clover coming up through the country. And we'd sprayed out the bent grass and cropped it and done all sorts of weird and wonderful things to try and get grass to grow. And here we are, just by over a little bit of annual ryegrass and doing our program, we're getting a significant compositional change of the pasture with minimum, with minimum tillage. Um, in terms so, of dry matter? So in terms of dry matter production, we've probably gone from three tonne to the hectare per annum um, on the traditional pastures that we had here, even though we've been putting on a lot of fertiliser, to now we're getting up around six tonne per hectare doesn't sound like a, a big increase, but we know on some of my better paddocks now on hill country, we're getting up around 10 tonne per hectare production per annum. So, so we're really, the system's changing, um, it's still changing, and, but we're starting to see the, the increase in productivity that, we're, that we were hoping for.